Ambition is a word that has multiple definitions. Hence, some people perceive it as a vice that causes greed and inequalities, while others see it as the motor behind advanced and prosperous societies. Even the greatest thinkers in history couldn't agree on this. I mean, Montaigne encouraged us to reject ambition. Marcus Aurelius said that ambition meant tying our sanity to external factors, while others like Heraclitus emphasized that big results require big ambitions. I'd consider myself somewhat ambitious. I mean, I always had this compulsive drive to dream bigger, and it helped me a lot in my life. It pushed me to leave my home country, Morocco, seeking bigger opportunities all over the world. But it also made me kind of a lone wolf, to be honest. And after spending time between North America, Europe, and North Africa, it's really interesting to see how ambition is celebrated in some cultures, while it's kind of frowned upon in others. And that's what I want to cover in this video, this complex subject that is ambition and share with you my personal struggle with ambition and how I completely redefined it for myself, but also meet some of my friends and see their take and the differences of ambition between Europe and North America. Now, when looking back on my childhood, and I don't want to be my own therapist here, but I'd say that my parents always had high expectations of me in school or in life in general. So from a young age, I'd say that ambition was ingrained in my psyche. I always knew that no one owes me a thing in life and that if I wanted something, I had to work really hard for it. And I think that's a positive thing. And to be honest, it's the default mindset all over Morocco. If you've ever been there, you know that it's a country with no major natural resources. So people don't expect handouts and they are forced to hustle. And to be brutally honest, a good chunk of the population is illiterate. Especially from previous generations, they can't read or write. But somehow they make it work. Either by learning crafts or starting a small business, they survive. And that's the energy around, especially in cities like Casablanca or Marrakesh. But around 2018 is when I decided to move abroad. I speak three languages fluently, so I was exploring my options. And I decided to move to Paris, initially for a six months internship. Somehow it's been six years today and I'm still here. For most of the year, I'm here in Paris. For the rest of the year, I'm somewhere in Europe, in America or back home in Morocco. I've seen great cities, but Paris is definitely one of the greatest cities in the world. Like every major city, it has some negative aspects. And the aspects I find negative are not the smelly subway or the stereotypes about Parisians, but it's a cultural and sociological aspect that, to be honest, is not limited to Paris, the city, or even France, but you can find all over Europe. And it's an aspect that I see has deeper and bigger implications. Moving to Paris, I was in for a few surprises. The first thing I realized is that ambition is not considered as cool in Europe, especially here in France. Saying that you're ambitious overtly can be perceived as you willing to step on others to climb to the top. Even studying in one of the top business schools here, I was shocked to see how many of my classmates were expressing that they're not looking for an ambitious career and that they were more into work-life balance. And it was quite odd because me as an immigrant here, I had no choice but to be ambitious. And sometimes to relate to people more and actually not alienate them, I'm forced to downplay my ambitions and not talk about my most ambitious and bold projects I'm dreaming about. Culturally in Paris, being a little bit blasé, nonchalant about life is considered cooler. One of my most ambitious projects is to build this YouTube channel and build something meaningful for people who are intellectually curious, trying to understand the word better and who are into reading and erudition and who are creative and trying to build something of their own. But this is something I do on the side. I have a highly demanding profession. I travel at least once a month between Europe and North America. So to balance both, it was really challenging. So last year, I had to take some measures and be in transition with my time to carve out time to work on my YouTube channel, or keep up a pace of one video a month, succeed in my profession, also carve out time to read, to work out, and meet friends and family. And besides a few friends who have the same temperament and ambitions as me, not a lot of people can relate to my lifestyle. Everyone is like, hey, you should enjoy life more, you're in your 20s, and I'm not saying, should not enjoy life but 
I enjoy working on this. I enjoy building something meaningful that simulates my intellectual curiosity. Now, I don't say that there's no ambitious people in Europe. I know a ton and it's just that I see the difference in perspective between Europe and North America. Now, the more I grow up, the more I realize that the true motor of any society is the entrepreneur. Like Nassim Taleb says, it's because of crazy individuals like entrepreneurs that a society functions. I mean, the odds are set against the entrepreneur. The failure rate is high, but it's that small probability of getting extremely lucky that pushes them to take risks. That's what makes a really healthy economic system. That's why I have such an admiration for risk takers. But oddly enough, it does not seem to be the case here. Now look, I might be wrong. I've been living here for only six years. So I want to hear the take of an actual entrepreneur, a risk taker, a friend of mine, probably the most successful friend of mine and who took risks and basically retired at age 28. So let's meet him. Est-ce que tu penses que le mot ambition aujourd'hui est mal vu en France ou en Europe? Je pense que euh, ça dépend ce qu'on met derrière ambition. Et quand elle est euh, mise au bon endroit, ça n'a pas ce mot ambition mal vu dans ce mm -hmm. contexte-là okay. en France. Et après, il y a une évolution aussi dans le temps entre euh, le moment où nous, on a développé ce à aujourd'hui où euh, ça fait plus de 10 ans que la French Tech existe. Et donc, il y a de plus en plus de vocations entrepreneuriales euh, au fur et à mesure des, des années qui font que euh, l'ambition, euh, finalement, euh, fait partie un petit peu de notre quotidien. C'est quand que tu as, as vendu ce sud apport en tant que boîte Ouais, on a vendu en janvier 2022 et on est sorti de l'opérationnel en janvier 2024. Je dirais que potentiellement, tu peux aller en retraite si tu veux. Pourquoi au début de ta carrière, tu n'aurais pas choisi je sais pas, une carrière plus safe, moins de risques euh, J'avais envie d'être mon propre patron euh, rapidement. Je n'étais pas quelqu'un qui suivait beaucoup les règles à l'école. Euh, vu qu'on a développé une appart hyper jeune à 18 ans, on ne s'est pas réellement posé la question. On a eu ce feu un petit peu en nous. Et donc l'entrepreneuriat, euh, c'était une forme de, de, de choix pour nous euh, qui était totalement approuvé par nos parents. Euh, mais il fallait le faire. Parfait, merci. Now, coming from Casablanca, Morocco, which is also a big city, 4 million people, pretty chaotic, uh, fast pace, and Paris as well, big city with a lot of people, millions of people. I feel that New York City is just on another level of chaos and drive. And just learning about the history of the city and getting exposed to its energy kind of makes you bolder by osmosis. It's like people here are aware that there are endless opportunities to climb to the top or succeed in their fields. I remember this Uber driver who told me he came as a war refugee in the 80s from Sierra Leone, a war-torn country. He didn't even speak the language, no particular skills, and he worked like low-level jobs, saved up his money, opened like small clothing shop, saved up his money and sent like three of his kids to college, completely changing their life trajectory. And coming from Africa myself, it's just inspiring to hear these stories because it completely changes your perception of possibilities and opportunities. If a war refugee comes here and changes his circumstances, what is your excuse? On the flip side though, Americans can be very driven, but for the wrong reason sometimes. Let me explain. Keeping up with the Joneses is much more endemic here than Europe. A lot of people here can be ambitious, but because they're pursuing higher social status, to buy a bigger house, get more toys, which is very different from Europe. In contrast to Americans, Europeans can find joy in small things like a picnic or a meal in a cheap taverna somewhere. And that European perspective really pushed me to redefine ambition for myself and question what I was really pursuing. And I'll get to that later. But what I really like about New York City is that I don't need to downplay my ambition. I think people even overplay their ambition here. So I don't need to explain myself every time or you know, lead a, a double life. It's quite nice. So, you born and raised in New York. Yep. What do you think makes this city great? A lot of things, I think. One, the overall kind of ambition of so many people. Mm -hmm. Everyone is, seems like a go-getter. Everyone wants to accomplish big things and run the world. So, mm -hmm. it kind of rubs off on you if you live here for some period of time. I don't think ambition is a controversial word here. 
No. Do you feel like it's acceptable socially? Yeah, a hundred percent. I want to accomplish these big goals, bold yeah. goals. Like, yeah. do you feel like people around you discourage you or? No. In New York, you won't ever get judged because people are too preoccupied with their own lives. <laughs> I think most of the time, if you say, "Hey, I'm starting a blog. I'm starting. Uh, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a screenplay," or people are just going to be like, "Oh, cool. Good luck," mm -hmm. and that's it, and they'll just move on. Now, while America taught me that boldness and ambition are okay. The European perspective helped me redefine ambition for myself. At this stage of my life, I just accept that ambition is part of my temperament and I can't change it, but I can channel it the right way. Ultimately, I want my ambition to help me buy my freedom to pursue what I really want to pursue. I mean, I'm enjoying my profession. I learned a lot of transferable skills, whether it's leadership, management, sales, persuasion in general. It also allows me to have contact with reality and not be disconnected while I'm working on my creative projects. And personally, I just don't see myself not building something on the side of my profession. Starting my own project or business for me is existential. It's not just financial. I need to take these small risks. Starting your own business is a form of risk taking and as Nassim Taleb would say, a life without sacrifice and risk taking isn't really a life worth living. That's why the kind of risk averse aspect in Europe annoys me because my ultimate nightmare is to end up as a cog in a machine for someone else's dream.